Hello there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to create HLODs in Unreal Engine 5. Um, creating HLODs in Unreal Engine 4 is pretty straightforward, but um, apparently there is no documentation, there is no documentation, real documentation about it in Unreal Engine 5. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that you have to do is, I mean, it's already um, enabled by default if your level doesn't have a uh, world partition enabled. So if that's enabled, then you can't use HLODs. I mean, you can use, but the HLOD is gonna be different. It's, it's gonna be based on world partition, which um, can, you can't really use it in mobile devices. So you can't um, use the HLOD and world part partition in that way. Um, so make sure that world partition is disabled Mostly on Engine 4 projects that are being converted into on Engine 5 projects don't have word partition enabled. But if you are going to be um, creating work, uh, a level without a word partition, make sure you have a new level uh, and then you have the basic one set up. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you come in here, world partition set to none um, so if we come down to yeah world partition is set to none it's disabled you don't have any world partition but if you go ahead and create a new level a new specifically a new landscapes uh, landscape level in our engine 5 it's gonna have world partition enabled by default so don't do that let me get back into my uh, my level the next next thing you have to do is go to the world settings if you don't see it um, go into the window make sure you have world settings uh, to be shown then come in here type in HLOD and you have all the settings you want uh, first of all, you won't have anything in here. You won't have this here. It's just going to have uh, zero array elements. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how HLODs work in a second. So as you can see, they are going to, if, you, if I want to type in, uh, click in one of them, I am going to select all of the meshes in here. But if here... I click on one of them it's just one mesh it's just because that mesh is going to be swapped with a with an array of meshes which is much much simpler like so so i'm going to delete it so you this is the default one so you have nothing pretty much in it so you go ahead and click the uh, plus icon in here a plus icon in here uh, and in the edge lot zero you can have different levels of HLODs. I mean, I wouldn't suggest you do that because every time you bake new HLODs, you are basically adding some new meshes to the package size and to uh, memory usage, which isn't great. So one level is gonna be perfect. Uh, and desired bound radius, so it's, it's basically say, saying that um, with which bound you want to grab all the meshes. So if I'm going to put something like 500, it's going to probably grab these two together only without this, just these two together. 4,000 will probably grab all the meshes in this area together. So the radius is getting bigger and bigger to grab all the meshes and create a new mesh from them and then swap them uh, to reduce the draw calls. Uh, and you can change a fling percentage. I usually use the uh, default value in the mesh generating set, uh, generation settings. Uh, there are some settings that um, need some attention. So if you are going to be using the merge uh, simplification methods, if you are using merge, then you're fine. 
um, you can just go ahead and change the light map resolution and everything um, I mean we're not using nanite too, too much but you can enable it in here it's nothing wrong with that but there are settings that I'm not gonna go through all of them this, there's just some something really important to mention here that I'm going to do that so how can we build on um, the HLOD so go into to window uh, type in hierarch hierarchical LOD outliner and then you're gonna be greeted with this uh, generate the clusters so this is the first cluster so it's showing that this has grabbed all of these assets together this is here as well you can if you don't want it you can remove it from the cluster uh, by right clicking and removing it uh, or you can exclude it and do something else with it um, and these are the same thing that I told you these are the radiuses that you can see here the desired bound radius and then when you're happy with the results you can if you're not happy with the um, with the bounds and the way it's going to grab everything and make them an uh, array of meshes if you're not happy with that you can go back into here change it bounds or um, you can change remove the meshes from here as well if you're happy with it then just go ahead and click on generate proxy meshes it's gonna take a while this scene is pretty um, simple and it it takes a little bit of time so keep that in mind once you press on this then you're gonna go rest take a coffee probably um, yeah let's click on it okay um, the meshes are created right now I'm going to move this one here so you don't see it so this is what we have right now um, looks good it definitely reduces the draw calls if you don't know what draw calls are uh, I have a separate video about it so you can just come here basically type in stat RHI and draw primitive calls is great if you come closer you have more um, but since we are using HLDs in distances then it's less draw calls stat RHI okay um so there's a catch here if you come in here for example this mesh uh, these are the meshes we created this me these meshes are huge are really really complex so in, an in another words it didn't really change the complexity of meshes it just changed the uh, draw calls it reduced the draw calls by combining all the materials into one material that's it so if you pay close attention this is the texture the real texture we had this is the combined texture so all the meshes um, are using the same texture the same material which reduces the draw call substantially but the complexity of meshes are the same So there's another solution to fix this if you I mean if it's a problem for you if it's not a problem then don't worry about it and if you um, come in here and uh, take a look at all this stuff all the actors are retaining a hundred percent of their triangles so they're not simplified at all sometimes with using the merge method it's gonna simplify the meshes a little bit sometimes up to 50% which is great but most of the times you won't really um, get super simplified meshes you can change go ahead and change the uh, simplification method to simplify and change the screen size so the lower uh, screen size is gonna mean lower um, mesh quality so I'm gonna go ahead with 150 and then regenerate clusters and generate proxy meshes again 
Um, okay, now it's done. It actually crashed once on me, so I had to go ahead and uh, click on if it crashes for you. Make sure you um, have this real time disabled because apparently um, it's a little bit heavy on GPU. So now it's simplified, and as you can see, it's even less than half a percent. <laughs> So each has 180 something triangles, which is really, really simplified. So if you pay close attention, you can see that the meshes are super, super simplified to the point that you can't even recognize them anymore, which is fine if you're working on a really huge landscape or a big city that you don't want everything to be really, really complex. This is actually super fine and it's not um, the size is actually not a problem anymore since it won't increase the package size or memory usage too much. One other thing I forgot to mention is the override draw distance. So uh, under the mesh generation settings, you have the transition screen size. You may not understand the uh, screen size, but the less screen size um, means more far from the mesh but more more screen size means you are closer to the mesh but i'm not usually using that since we have draw distances uh and it's like four thousand do it do the swapping thing in four thousand units far away from the mesh when the camera's four thousand units far away from the mesh do the swapping that's pretty much it or two thousand units Keep that in mind that if you change this, you have to do the whole uh, generate the proxy meshes once again. You have to regenerate the clusters, you have to generate the proxy meshes again. So, this is how you do the um, HLODs. There's a problem here if you are using, if you are baking the lighting, and you, if you are using the setting lighting, then you have a problem. If you're using only dynamic shadows or you're not baking anything at all, then you're fine. You can just be happy about it and uh, this video is finished for you. Uh, I hope it helps you actually. <laughs> but if you are going to bake the lighting for you um, and if you are going to simplify the meshes, you can't really use the GPU light mess. That's the catch here. You can use it though. I can just go ahead and show you how it looks. So we've uh, bake the lighting with GPU light mass and look how bad the lighting is. It's actually a bug of GPU light mass. It, sh it shouldn't be like this. So it's since we are creating new meshes, um, we are creating or we have the option to do these things. We have the option to uh, generate light map UVs or we have the option to reuse mesh light map UVs whatever you do it doesn't matter the G GPU light mass will use the uh, light map for of the uh, merged meshes so it's gonna be like real really low quality the mesh is simplified it's less uh, it's more low quality if you change the screen size uh, of the simplification method, it's gonna look a little bit better, but it's not usable. You can't really use it with GPU light mass. You can only use GPU light mass if you are using merge um, option. And that really depends on your scene. You may have to exclude some of the assets from the HLOD uh, uh, proxy meshes. So how can fix this? we can't use GPU light mass. The only way to, I mean, if you are going to simplify the meshes and if that's really, really an important thing to do, then you can't use GPU light mass. You have the option to uh, go ahead and build lighting only here with CPU the traditional way. That's gonna look much, much better than GPU light mass when you are using HLODs. I haven't tested this though. There are, there's, I'm pretty sure that there's another uh, method for GPU light mass called, I mean, its name is really hard, Lushing, Lushing GPU light mass or something, but I mean, the name is really hard, but I haven't tested that. Maybe that helps you. I don't know. I, I've never used that one. I only used 
get traditional GPU light mass D, uh, in the, the GPU light mass that's in integrated in the engine, which doesn't work with HL which simplified HLEDs. Um, so CPU light mass, if you can't use the other one, if you can't integrate the other one with your engine, um, if you have to use GPU light mass and you have to use HLEDs, then you will go be going to use the merge method and hope for the best actually. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped you and if it did help you, please hit that like button and have a great day. Bye.